ready to tumble down the rabbit hole with me because uh, this deep dive, it takes us into Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, right? <laughs> Using those excerpts you sent over. Sure. We're going way beyond like the Mad Hatter and tea parties here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're going to uncover why this story still kind of resonates with us like centuries later. Oh, absolutely. I, I It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like Carol... He could have just written a children's story, but no, he took it further. Right. He created this intricate world that kind of reflects like these deeper truths about, you know, identity, logic, and even pokes fun at society along the way. Yeah. Yeah. He really goes there. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's like unpack this, right? Okay. We begin with, of course, Alice's iconic tumble down the rabbit hole. Yeah. And that, that seems straightforward on the surface, but it's like such a brilliant metaphor, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. It's that feeling we've all had at some point where, you know, life takes an unexpected turn and suddenly you're just in this uncharted territory and, and you're questioning like everything you thought you knew. Mm. And Alice is literally just following the white rabbit into like the unknown. Right, right into the unknown, yeah. And the way her size constantly changes throughout the story. I, yeah. I mean, it's more than just a whim whimsical detail, right? Yeah. Like one minute she's shrinking so small that she's worried about like drowning in her own tears. And then the next she's so big that her foot gets stuck in a chimney. Like Carol's really playing with something here, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Each time Alice's size, it shifts. Yeah. And she's forced to reassess her place in this strange new world, you know, <laughs> when she's towering over everything. Oh, you know? uh, yeah. It's like those times we feel overwhelmed and our problems just seem like blown out of proportion. Right, exactly. Like mm. completely blown out of proportion. And, you know, remember that part where she's terrified of growing too big to even leave the garden? Right. It's like that feeling of being trapped by our own growth, you know, those yeah. changes that we can't control. Yeah. So relatable, even as adults. Well, 100%. But then there's that like, contrasting liberation when she shrinks right yeah. and she's able to escape the white rabbit's house right and it highlights how perspective is everything mm. what feels huge and insurmountable one moment it can become manageable you can even find it freeing when we just change how we see it absolutely yeah it's so fascinating how those physical changes those size changes they directly mirror like the emotional roller coaster of growing up yeah it's like carol's telling us that these awkward, these confusing feelings, they're just a part of the journey. Mm. It's not something to fear. Right. And speaking of confusing, we got to talk about the language, right? Well, absolutely. Because the language itself is almost like a character in Wonderland. Yeah. Carol takes this thing, language, that we all rely on for communication, and he just twists it. And, mm. and it creates these hilarious situations that highlight how much words matter. Yeah. Like, sure. it's like that moment, you know, with Alice and the Caterpillar, where she's trying to explain to him that she feels not herself. Right, right. But their entire conversation just gets so tangled mm -hmm. because they're both interpreting the words so differently. Cool. Like, how often does that happen in real life? All the time, right. All the time. We misunderstand each other even when we're like technically speaking the same language precisely and it's it's not even just about like miscommunication it's about how language shapes our whole like our perception of things totally take for example the mad hatter's tea party you've got riddles with no answers poems like twinkle twinkle little bat and it's playful but at the same time it's kind of unsettling isn't it it's totally unsettling it's like carol is saying like what if what if the very structure that we use to understand the world is like unreliable exactly and suddenly everything's up for interpretation just like it is in wonderland exactly and who better to guide us through this topsy-turvy world than the unforgettable characters alice encounters right it's like each resident of wonderland they embody like a different quirk of logic right or a lack thereof right yeah, yeah. But it's it's more than just surface absurdity, though. Yeah. Don't you think there's also this sense that that Alice's journey externally, it's like mirroring the internal chaos of growing up? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah think about it. She's dealing with the frustration of her body constantly changing size. Right. The whole confusion of language not making sense. Right. And all these arbitrary rules that everybody else just seems fine with. Right. Exactly. It's like the adolescent experience, mm -hmm. just like distilled. You know, totally. It's like right. instead of algebra homework, she's got a talking rabbit with a pocket watch. Exactly. Yeah. But and the adults in Wonderland are hardly role models. Like take the Duchess, for example. Oh, my goodness. Throwing out these pronouncements like everything's got a moral. If only you can find it while she's literally surrounded by pandemonium in her own kitchen. Right. It's like Carol pointing out, 
you know, the hypocrisy that we sometimes encounter in, in the adult world. Oh, totally. <laughs> Adults trying to impose order on chaos. Mm -hmm. Preaching about morals when their own actions are anything but. Yeah. And then she just, like, casually tosses the baby at Alice like it's nothing. Yeah. Talk about dropping the ball on responsible parenting. Right. But, but within that absurdity, I think there's this subtle commentary about how how adults often burden children with their own anxieties, mm -hmm. you know, expectations, problems, without even realizing the impact it has. Oh, totally. And poor Alice is just trying to make sense of it all. And then to top it off, the baby turns into a pig. Right. It's almost like that's the ultimate symbol of how messy and unpredictable life can be. You think you've got a handle on things and then, bam, complete transformation. Precisely. And just when you think things can't get weirder, she runs into the Cheshire cat. Now, there's a character that embodies a certain kind of, like, wisdom, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Appearing and disappearing, leaving Alice with more questions than answers. I love those moments where he's, like, doling out these cryptic pieces of advice, you know? Right. That are both totally unhelpful and yet, like, strangely insightful at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, when Alice asks him which way she should go, and he's just like, well, that depends on where you want to get to. Like, yeah. come on. It's a brilliant way of illustrating that, that in life, sometimes there isn't a clear path. Yes. You know, there isn't, like, a right answer. And we have to figure it out for ourselves, just like Alice. And then there's that whole we're all mad here declaration. Right. Part of me finds it unsettling. Yeah. But there's also this strange sense of liberation in that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Like, what if it's okay to just, like, embrace the absurdity of it all? Absolutely. Wonderland, like, at its core, it operates on a completely different set of rules. Yeah. Here, madness isn't something to be feared. It's the norm. Yeah. And in a way, it gives Alice permission to to question everything, explore different perspectives, and ultimately, you know, define herself on her own terms. Which is so important because even though she's surrounded by all these, like, larger-than-life characters, you know? Yeah. The White Rabbit, the Queen Hearts, the Griffin, they, they're all, like, bossing her around. But she never completely loses her own sense of self. That's right. She might get frustrated, she might get scared, but she never stops questioning and trying to make sense of it all. And that right there, that's a powerful message for anyone, but especially young readers, you know? Yeah. Embrace that curiosity. Don't be afraid to question authority. Right. And always stay true to yourself, even when the world feels like it's gone completely mad. And, like, nowhere is that madness more, like, hilariously on display... Oh, tell me about it. ...than at the trial of the Knave of Hearts, right? Yeah. It's like, Carol took all these threads, right? The nonsensical language, these outlandish characters, his whole satire of the legal system. Right. And he just, like, wove them into this big, absurd spectacle. It really is some, yeah, the climax of everything Alice has gone through so far. Oh, totally. I mean, you've got the king and queen, right, <laughs> presiding over this court that's barely holding itself together. Right. The knave accused of stealing tarts. Of course. And the jury. <laughs> Literally a bunch of confused animals. And and don't forget the evidence. Right. Nonsensical poems that nobody understands. Nobody. Not even Alice. It's it's Carol at his best. Oh, yeah. Poking fun at how, even in our own world, you know, legal proceedings, they get so convoluted, they mm. just lose touch with, like, common sense. Absolutely. Yeah, it's easy to laugh at the Mad Hatter on the stand. Oh, yeah. Or, or the coop, you know, going on and on about Pepper. But, but there's this deeper point Carol's making here. Right. In a system that prioritizes power and authority over, like, actual logic and reason. Well, truth. Truth becomes very easy to manipulate. And in the middle of it all, Alice is called as a witness. Right. Even though she knows absolutely nothing about the case. Classic. Have you ever felt like that? Oh, yeah. Like, caught in a situation where the rules make zero sense... But everybody's acting like they do. All the time. Yeah. And it's the perfect twist, right? Mm -hmm. Alice, the only one who's retained any kind of grounding. Exactly. She's forced to, like, defend herself in this court of madness. Right. But she does more than just defend. Right. She stands up to the king and queen, calls out their ridiculous rules. Saying, enough. Yeah. <sighs> and ultimately rejects the whole thing. Stuff and nonsense, she says. It's such a triumphant moment. Yeah really is. Like, it's like she graduates from trying to make sense of Wonderland yeah. to realizing she has the power to, like, define reality for herself. Exactly. And that, I think that's that's the core of why this story still resonates with us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she wakes up, 
right? Back in the real world. Yeah. But she's changed. Right. She's brought back a piece of that wonderland perspective, mm -hmm. that courage to question authority. Yes. To embrace absurdity when it's staring you right in the face. It's like she's learned that growing up doesn't mean you have to lose that, like, sense of wonder yeah. and playfulness. Exactly. That sometimes, like, the most adult thing you can do is point at the emperor's new clothes and just be like, nope. Right. I don't see it. Not seeing it. Hmm. Precisely. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's a reminder to never stop questioning things. Yes. To nurture that inner child, you know, mm -hmm. the one who sees the world with fresh eyes. Yeah. To find the wonder, even especially when life feels a bit mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what about you out there listening? What are your Wonderland moments? Yeah, those times you felt like you'd, you'd fallen down the rabbit hole and the rules just didn't apply anymore. Right. How'd you navigate that? Did you find your voice like Alice did? Did you hold on to your sense of self? Carol reminds us that those moments of absurdity, of, of challenging what we think we know. Right. That's often where the greatest growth happens. So keep exploring those rabbit holes, dear listener. That's right. You never know what adventures, yeah. what insights await you on the other side.